So I suppose you want to know about this, this decapitation. This decapitation that took place in the ever-expanding and ever-increasingly strange story of my family history. Do you fancy looking at some photographs instead? So first we have uh, an ancestor that's maybe fictional. This is a sketch from a book by William Harrison Ainsworth, who is pretty much forgotten now. But in the sort of 1640s, 1650s, 1640s, no, 1840s and 1850s, he was this really, really popular novelist. He was one of the most popular novelists of his day, but he sort of went out of fashion in the later Victorian period. And this sketch is from a novel called The Lancashire Witches, which is about the Pendle Witch Trials of 1612. James, are you telling us, are you telling us that your ancestors were involved with the Pendle Witch Trials? Not quite sure, not directly, I don't think but they owned nearby Gorfup Hall. This chap in the sketch, the guy carrying on the floor, not the old ghostly figure, this is the nephew of my direct ancestor, Ralph Ashton. Carrying on the floor we have, possibly fictional, is Richard Ashton, his nephew. Next we have Old John, who was Quackers. Oh, sorry, he was a Quaker. At the time this photograph was taken, sort of about 1920, he was the oldest man in his village. And I have to say, he does have quite a magnificent beard. Must run in the family. Living at the same time as him, sort of up the road, was James the Postmaster who in his younger days worked as a grocer and quite frankly I just think he looks like a stern old headmaster from a 1930s novel. He doesn't look that friendly really, I don't think. He looks friendlier in this picture with his second wife who I think off the top of my head was called Hannah. And what I can't work out about this picture, is she missing a finger? Or is it the way she's got her hand? Because it's a bit of a weird position to have your hand in, that sort of like, more like a claw. Even if she was putting it in a pocket, you don't really put your hand in a pocket like that, do you? Hmm. Personally, I like to think she's missing a finger. I've been trying to find out where this next photograph was taken for a number of years, but I can't quite quite find it. I think it might have been on a... It looks like it was taken at the seaside on a pier, maybe. But it could just as equally have been a boat, because I can't find where this pier, if it existed, was. But this is my great-grandfather, Herbert, who allegedly was an accountant. Or judging by this symbol at the bottom, maybe an assassin. And here is his wife with him, a bit older, Miss Marple. Miss Constance Marple. What was Miss Marple's real first name? Jane. It was Jane, wasn't it? This is a really bad video, James. This is a... Coming in next, we have my great-grandmother, Annie, who was named after her father's dead second wife. And quite frankly, she looks like she's attending some sort of meeting of a ritualistic cult. Even though she lived to, like, a hundred years old, I did meet her once or twice and she was this this really nice gentle old lady and she looked like she'd never be involved in a cult in her life. 
But then again, you never can tell with some people, can you? Here we have another great-grandmother, Clara, the larger of these two ladies, and her mother, Sarah Ellen. Now, I think that Clara, I don't know a lot about these two, but I think that Clara looks like, she looks like a proper, hardcore Lancashire battle axe. She looks like she could beat you within an inch of your life if you step out of line. She wouldn't look out of place in Coronation Street. It, amazingly, I have pictures of all my great-grandmothers. So here is the last one. This is Mabel with her husband, Frank. Frank is not my great-grandfather. Frank is just a man she married in about 1940. Because Mabel, allegedly, is the one who fucked a Swede. This, I think, was taken in the 1960s, I'm going to say, this picture. Possibly. And it looks... Definitely looks like she's some sort of Labour Party Minister for Housing or some Labour Party Home Office Minister from that period. Moving down the line, we've got my grandpa. And Jesus Christ, look at the ears. Wow. Jug ears much? Okay, ears aside, he looks like trouble. He looks like he went around not causing wild amounts of trouble but he does look like the sort of lad your parents would warn you about, tell you to avoid. Now you listen to me very carefully lad. You stay away from that drug ears kid. He's trouble. Mark my words, he'll come to no good end. Actually, he died of a heart attack not long after I was born. Oh, hold on. I say not long after I was born, but let's just go back to my Wikipedia page where I changed my birthday, so... He died before I was born. And here he is in a tank. James, what is it with your family and dangerous weapons? Honestly, this, this, it's not a weapon, it's sports equipment. I've never shot anyone with it. You know, apart from myself that time, but I've never shot anyone with it. And lastly, we have my other grandfather. Again, the ears, jug ears. Keep trying to work out which one of these two grandfathers I look most alike, where I get most of my genetics from, but... It's very difficult to tell, considering I have no chin anymore. My nose... Mm. I think it's the second grandfather, this one. Maybe, it's got the same sort of... same sort of hook to it. I know that... Basically, my hair and height come from... Oh, no, they don't come from that side of the family. They come from a different line. Sorry, I'm completely confused. That's not the Manx line. The basic hair stuff comes from the Manx line. The hair height is to do with... Um, I explained this in another video, but um, it's to do with my Manx ancestry, that one. I think there are, like, some sketches of my, um, other famous ancestors. Well, there's definitely some of, like, the kings, like Henry III and Odin, if you go back far enough. And I think somewhere in Gorthup there is, like, some more of the Ashtons. Okay, next time I'll tell you about the decapitation, okay? I promise, I'll tell you about the decapitation the next time I do a family history video. I'll stop procrastinating.